Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is the Peace Corps Response webinar and Google Hangout. Um, this is our first one of the year, 2016. My name is Bina Contreras. I am a, re uh, a recruitment and placement specialist with Peace Corps Response. Um, today, I will be talking about Peace Corps Response, and we also have two guests. Um, here next to me is Dustin. He also served with Peace Corps Response and is also a recruitment and placement specialist with Peace Corps Response. We also have Jim, who's out in the field in Colombia. So you might be able to see his face in the bottom of the screen. And he is, he is um, joining us as well. So after I do a short presentation, we'll go to our... Uh, returned Peace Corps response volunteer, Dustin, and also Jim, who's currently serving as a Peace Corps response volunteer um, to talk about their service. And after that, we will take questions. So um, if you have questions um, during this presentation, I will address them later on at that time after the presentation and after Jim and um, Dustin has talked a little bit about their experiences. You can ask questions to them specifically, or you can ask questions to us about Peace Corps response, um, but we will address those questions later. Also, if you have personal questions that you would like addressed to you personally, just you, you can email um, us at pcresponse at peacecorps.gov. If you send an email to that address, then we can respond to you by email your questions. Um, so if you want your question addressed to everyone, then please feel free to ask the question here. Um, if you want your question just your answer just to you, then you can um, email us again at pcresponse at peacecorps.gov. Okay, so now I'll start with a, with a PowerPoint presentation and um, then we'll go into talking more uh, with Dustin and Jim. So first of all, Peace Corps response is um, part of Peace Corps that provides short-term high impact, um, sorry, short-term high impact um, positions for volunteers out in the field um, where we have service. Um, I'm trying to, okay. So they are from three to 12 months assignments and therefore either returned Peace Corps volunteers, RPCVs, or professionals who have been working in their field for uh, a number of years. Um, now we get a lot of questions about what does that mean professional? Um, and it, it does depend on the specific assignment um, position that you're applying to. So we may be looking for someone with more five to 10 years of experience or someone with maybe three to five years of experience, but it really differs depending, it's different depending on which position you're applying for. So that is the question we often get. Um, it's our positions are address the needs of the community. So these are specific positions that have been requested for by our partner organizations out in um, the communities abroad. And um, they are similar to our 27 month positions where we are looking to achieve our goals of world peace and friendship. And so if you know much about our 27 month position, we have as you know, similar, the same goals that we are achieving by putting volunteers out in the field, living with the communities, working with the community members um, to serve their needs. Um, so the fields that we work in are the same as a 27 month positions. Um, business, NGO development, youth and community development, education and teacher training, agriculture and environment, health and HIV AIDS, information technology. And the one area that we do that is different is disaster preparedness and response. So um, that's one area that we have volunteers in that um, for response that we don't have for the 27 month 
positions. So some of the examples of some of our positions right now, um, you can see, I mean, we have several, many more than this, but these are just a few of our examples. One, um, public health specialist in Burkina Faso, finance specialist in Palau, uh, Zeri, uh, Zeri speaking English language teacher trainer in um, Georgia, fishery specialist in Peru, health community educators in Guinea, and many, many more. Um, and they're all in different fields um, and they have different specific um, uh, tasks that were that will be you know addressing the needs of, of certain partner organizations um, so you can go to our website and check out some of our other positions that are out there that you might be a great fit for but these are just a few of our examples what you can see is is that they're all very different um, and one thing that people ask is that sometimes they say, I don't quite see the position um, that matches my background. Well, tomorrow there might be that exact position that matches your background, your skills, that is calling your name. So um, it's a matter of, you know, checking, but also you can get notifications about positions that might match your background as well. So some of the um, averages that, uh, that we have information about is the application process, it takes about three months to get through. From the time you apply until the time you leave is just about three months. We usually have our positions up about four months uh, in advance um, before the volunteer would leave for um, service. So if you know you're not ready to serve until July, then I would recommend start looking for positions in February or March um, because that is when they will be posted. Um, so we get about 3,000 applications a year. Um, and uh, we, we get Peace Corps response volunteers um, oh, sorry, we have Peace Corps response volunteers who have not served um, before in the past. Uh, we have about over 50 of them that we've placed. Um, so it's fairly recent last few years that we've opened it up to those who have not served in Peace Corps in the past. Actually, Dustin, um, who's here with us, he did not serve with um, Peace Corps in the past and joined Peace Corps response as a professional. Um, so it's open to all. Um, so the average age is 41, um, if you look at all of our volunteers. And we have about 350 positions in 53 countries a year. Um, we also have a program within Peace Corps called Global Health Service Partnership. And that program focuses on placing nurses and physicians out in the field. Um, and right now there are 32 serving and we are placing another, we are in the process of placing another group of about 50 or so. Um, this summer they will be leaving to a variety of countries, um, Tanzania, Uganda, Malawi, Swaziland, that's, so um, if you are a nurse or a physician, I recommend that you look up our Global Health Service Partnership Program. Um, this is the application process. Um, it is an online application process, so you would go to our website, which I will put up at the end of this presentation. Um, once you apply, it um, could take a couple weeks to hear back. It could take a couple months to hear back. Um, it really depends on the situation. It depends on how competitive you are. It depends on how competitive your competitors are, um, where you pl are placed in that you know, process. And so, and also depending on when that position might leave. So the sooner the position might leave, the sooner you might hear back. Um, but it does range. 
um, depending on the situation. So if you hear, once you hear back about an interview, you would have your interview. You would, um, after the interview, we would do reference check and you would have a pre-medical pre clearance, pre-legal um, clearance. Um, and once you get through those, that, that usually takes a few weeks after the interview um, to find out whether you're invited. If you are invited, then you would go through a medical clearance um, and a legal clearance, which isn't there, but, <laughs> and uh, you would get your passport. Um, all of our volunteers serve on a no-fee passport um, and visa if it's required for a service. Um, prior to leaving, um, most of our volunteers go through a pre-departure um, call with POST where they can have their questions answered um, and then leaving for a site. Most of our training is about a week or two weeks of training um, before you go to your site. Um, and that's with the process. And as I said before, it takes about three months to get through. Um, now, one thing to remember, though, that sometimes even if you are invited, you have to really wait until you're medically and legally cleared before you know definitely um, if you are going to go. Um, that's something we talk to people about during the interview process. Um, And some of the benefits, um, most of them are the same as a 27-month program where you have a living allowance in local currency. So you're living at the level, the same um, level with the community. It's usually about, I can't tell you exactly the amount because it's different um, depending on which country you're in. And it's usually about at the same level as a teacher in the community. Um, it's definitely enough to be comfortable in your living situation every year. Volunteers fill out a survey so that we know how much is comfortable for volunteers to serve. Um, you get two vacation days a month that accrue over time. So if you are in a 12-month post position, then you would accrue 24 um, days of leave during that time, which you can, you know, leave your site and go on and, you know, maybe return home or travel or whatnot. Um, you get full medical benefits. Now, Peace Corps basically pays for your medical needs while you're in service. We have a Peace Corps medical officer who is there for all of our volunteers. They assess your medical needs. Um, they are there to send you to the right, um, the right specialist. Um, but Peace Corps pays for those things. So in a sense, Peace Corps serves as a insurance <laughs> company where they, they are paying for those needs. Um, we pay for round trip airfare to the country and back. Um, we provide safe and secure housing. We have a security officer that makes sure that you are safe and secure in the housing that you're in um, and uh, help you address any security issues. Um, you also get a readjustment allowance of $425 that accrue over the time, uh, $425 a month that accrue over time, and you get it when you return. So when you return back to the States um, or wherever, then that's when you apply for it and you get it as a lump sum amount. Um, so that's to help you readjust back into your life after Peace Corps. Um, and of course, other benefits is, you know, applying your expertise um, in a new challenging environment and gaining perspective of international development. And, uh, you know, everyone also has other benefits that they gain from it personally um, that, you know, maybe our guests, uh, Dustin and Jim can even speak to as well. So how do I find out about peace, PCR? Uh, openings. Here, over here on the top is our website. Um, for one, you can check our website regularly. Um, you can search for positions based on the sector or based on the country, or you could type in keywords 
Let's let's say you are an IT specialist. Um, you can click in IT and see what comes up with those words. Um, you can also create an online profile um, to generate results as well. And and sign up for our impact newsletter. This newsletter that you see um, is an example of what we send out once a month. So if you wanna see what's happening with Peace Corps Response, that newsletter will go out. We also highlight specific um, positions that we usually want more traffic on. So that's always good to check those. Um, and then attend events like you are right now, our webinar. We hope to do more of these webinars throughout the year. Um, so you can always check out to see, check out when we'll have new other webinars. We will also be in your area throughout the year. So um, we take trips to different areas, different cities, and we have presentations as well. So you can find out if we will be close to you um, as well. So one other thing that um, we do is every first and third Friday of the month, we have open office hours. They're from 1 to 4 p.m. Um, Eastern time. In order to get in touch with a recruiter, you would just email our inbox at pcresponse at peacecore.gov and let them know you would like to sign up for our office hours and we would make uh, an appointment during that time to specifically talk to you about your questions and or concerns or excitement or whatnot. <laughs> um, you can also call us at 202-692-2250. Um, again, our website is at the bottom. So um, that concludes the presentation for now. Um, next, what, what I'll do is I'll introduce Dustin. Um, who served in the Ukraine, and he'll introduce him, he'll talk about his service and what he did and why he decided to join. And then um, we'll talk to Jim, and after we talk to both of them, we will start answering your questions. Okay, um, so I will. So over here to my right is Dustin. So I'll, let, I'll hand it over to you if you wanna talk about your experiences. I wrote some notes, everybody, so don't mind me if I look down. Um, so I'm Dustin Manhart. I uh, <clears throat> served in Peace Corps response from uh, 2012 to 2013 uh, in Ukraine. Uh, I was an NGO capacity building uh, volunteer, and so that we actually have some of those positions up right now. I'm filling for that, so if anybody's interested, look at those. Um, it was a great experience. Um, I was not a Peace Corps volunteer before, so I did not do the two-year program in 2012. Um, Peace Corps uh, passed some legislation where they changed it. They know you no longer had to be a Peace Corps, uh, former Peace Corps volunteer to serve a Peace Corps response. If you met certain criteria, you're an experienced professional and you met the criteria for that position and you were a suitability fit based on an interview. So I was one of the first few to do that. I was lucky I was a pilot volunteer. Um, so what I was doing before and why did I do Peace Corps uh, response? Why did I choose to? As a mid-career professional, I was about, I think I was 32, 33 at the time when I decided to do it. and. So I really wanted to get into international development, and um, I had lived in Southern California. I was, I'm a social worker. I did nonprofit management for about five years, um, case management, those kind of things. And so I really wanted to get back into, uh, into international development. And so I thought Peace Corps would be a great gateway. I always wanted to do service. I'd been an AmeriCorps volunteer in the past, but I also thought the Peace Corps was a great brand name to get into international development. So some of that would help me as I moved forward in my career. So I decided to apply. I talked to a few friends who were RPCBs. I'm a return Peace Corps volunteers, um, and they, um, one of my friends was like, Dustin, hey, they, they opened this new thing up. Now you can serve without being a volunteer. You should apply. And so I checked it out, um, got on the website, and saw, and there was only one position that really needed my skill set. And again, that was NGO kind of capacity building. I was a, a director of a large uh, nonprofit program in Southern California. And so I had a certain skill set that fit the position in Ukraine. And so I was really open to going anywhere, but Ukraine happened to be the only place that needed my skills, so I applied the position. I was fortunate and I was selected. Um, and so then I went to uh, Ukraine to serve. And so uh, I wanted to just tell you a little bit about my um, experience while in Ukraine. Um, Peace Corps response is definitely a little different, you know, having heard from a lot of my colleagues of what the two year program is like. It's you hit the ground running. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of that. You know, you don't really have, there's no staging for those of you who are RPCBs. You have one to two weeks of, of training. Um, you don't have a lot of language training, so you kind of have to get there and you have to get going. So I was lucky. 
Um, where I lived, I lived with a couple of young Ukrainian professionals. They spoke English. I spoke a little bit of Russian, had a little bit of training in that. Um, figured out ways to communicate. Those guys were awesome. Um, the folks in my organization, and my organization was a small NGO that uh, worked with uh, HIV positive uh, LGBTQ populations. And so what I did is I came in and kind of helped them develop trains for staff, um, kind of focus on a financial strategy. But really what I helped them do is, inter is um, network within the international community um, to develop you know, other funders and get more money, things like that. Um, and one of the things that I really learned in my, uh, in my uh, I think, experience that I really want to stress to people, I stress this when I interview folks, is that I had these big ideas of what I thought I could come and share. And in reality, my organization, the folks I worked with, they really dictated to me what they needed. And when I walked away, what I realized is what they took from me was probably, you know, the introductions to all the other funders from, you know, Western European countries, United States, things like that. More than anything, when I walked in, my counterpart, who was my boss, I think he was 24 at the time, my organization was very casual. He would wear, you know, tennis shoes and T-shirts and shorts during the day. Of course, when he would go out, he would put jeans on. But when we would meet with people, he'd be very informal. And, and I would usually show up anytime we had a meeting outside of uh, outside of our office with a potential funder or just somebody to network with. I always had a suit on. Halfway through my service, he went out and he bought a suit. And he would never come to work in the suit, but he would always change into that suit whenever we would have a meeting. And he took that on after after I left. And those are kind of the, the things you have to look at as the long-term you know, affects the positive things. You know, my counterpart is a leader in the LGBT community and also HIV AIDS community in, in, in Ukraine. So that wasn't something I initially thought. So just being flexible on what you what you leave behind uh, with your uh, with your organizations and the lasting impact you have. It's not always what you think it's going to be. Um, so it was a great experience. I got to you know work with staff. I got to go out in the community, work with our work with our schools, did some stuff in the community, uh, sex education stuff. It was just an amazing experience. There's amazing people in Ukraine. I was only there six months, but I developed some really long lasting uh, relationships with those folks. And after I got back, I had an opportunity to have my counterpart and my host mom, who happened to be his mom. Um, they came to Washington D.C. when I was here, and we did some LGBTQ advocacy here. We got to speak at the Hill. We got to meet with the White House staffer. We spoke with the State Department. So that's really that third goal. So it was really a lasting impact for me. And it had a lot of meaningful, it was very meaningful for me as a social worker to work on civil rights for a certain group of, of individuals uh, uh, that are affected uh, by that. So I'm going to jump off to the last portion and I'll let Jim uh, tell his story. Um, what did I do when I came back? So when I came back, you know, I, I really wanted to get into international development, but I had some challenges finding jobs. And so I did some networking and I actually was able to get a job in consulting um, at Booz Allen. And I think, you know, the reason why Booz Allen hired me is because of that international kind of piece where they like that diverse component. And so I was able to go there and work for about a year doing health care consulting. Um, and then, you know, I kept applying and I got a job at Peace Corps. Um, and one of the great new benefits of it, for Peace Corps response volunteers who serve for 12 months or more is you get non-competitive eligibility for employment with Peace Corps. If that's something you'd like to do if you'd like to have federal employment in the future. Um, so that's something to think about. And so after a year at Booz Allen, I was able to get a job at Peace Corps and that's where I'm at now. And before I did Peace Corps uh, response, that's really where I wanted to get. So I really have kind of gotten to where I wanted to be. And you know, Peace Corps response is just a great experience for that. And I was very fortunate to have that opportunity, but it really helped me adjust my career into international development. So I'm really excited about that. And I'll turn it over to Jim now. Yeah, thank you, Dustin, for sharing your story. Um, great. So now I'll... Now we'll see if it works. There we go. <laughs> Jim, thanks for okay. joining us from Colombia. How, how is it going out there? Ha uh, sido muy bien, gracias. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll continue in English from here, and I'm trusting that everyone can hear me. I, one of the things you learn in Peace Corps is that infrastructure is different in other countries and so if I disappear at some point it may be that the internet has dropped out or electricity has gone out but I appreciate the opportunity to be here it certainly is different my experience um, I was a probably more typical Peace Corps volunteer back in 1979 graduating from college and I uh, looked around I was looking at graduate school or different careers and I was lucky I got a position with the Peace Corps doing agriculture extension in Ecuador and um, that was life-changing and I again I, I guess some of you listening probably are volunteers or were volunteers so you know what I'm talking about and uh, I like a lot of volunteers finished my term I uh, really enjoyed my time there, came back and uh, went to graduate school, finished a master's and a PhD, did some 
my doctoral work in Bangladesh and uh, did consulting work in Liberia and Bolivia and uh, just had a what I thought was going to be a burgeoning international consulting career but then uh, my wife and I and she was Donna Madonna was a volunteer in Ecuador as well so that's life-changing uh, we had a child and everything changes and uh, so following that we had about I don't know, 28 years of being in the U.S., working in the U.S. planning office. Um, I was a professor at a couple of colleges, directed research on drug addiction and AIDS, actually, treat, uh, in uh, Ohio. And I, I just kind of bummed around. But for the last 16 years, I was in a more stable position as a regional planner in Maine, which I loved. And Maine is my, my home state now. <clears throat> But with the children grown up, one an engineer and one in college, I decided it was uh, time to leave that position. And I, I, I chuckle when I hear 32 is mid-career. Um, <laughs> at 58, I'd like to think I still have a few changes left. I joined, I, I sent in an application, like they said, I, I just started scanning the opportunities for Peace Corps response. And there were, you know, I had certain limits. So that there aren't many programs where you speak Bengali or Marathi, but there were quite a few with Spanish, which was an advantage, and quite a few involving economic development and the sort of broad range of skills I picked up in, in the years. And Columbia just was a almost perfect fit because uh, like a lot of response volunteers, they were looking for a small crew to come into a country that had not had any economic development program for decades and try to launch a new program. So it wasn't just being a volunteer. It was really designing a volunteer program. That certainly appealed to me. I, I wanted to be a little more in the driver's seat. It, it doesn't always work out that way. But um, So I, I went through all the, the uh, bureaucratic and health maneuvers one goes through with Bina's help. And that's probably a job unto itself, getting through all the medical procedures and other requirements. And then miraculously, somehow most of us come out the other side, usually with hours to spare, um, before we're, we're uh, sent a plane ticket and off we go. And uh, again, arrived in Colombia and Barranquilla, just as they were really changing the program here, moving out of cities, going back to rural development, which is my background. and. Um, with two weeks of training, which is pretty fast, uh, off we went to our towns. I, I got very lucky. I think all of us feel lucky when we're, we're assigned to a town because it just seems to be a good match. And I'm part of a group of 10, but my town is the birthplace of Garcia Gabri Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the author of 100 Years of Solitude, and a town imbued with history and a sort of what they call magic realism. And it's this, uh, it's kind of gritty developing country, but at the same time, an intellectual interest, an interest in poetry and art and music that just says to me that we have a lot of opportunity here. As Colombia recovers from years of violence and strife, they seem to be on a much more stable trajectory, and it's a perfect time to be here as a volunteer designing an economic development program. So that, that worked out really well. Um, there are challenges. This is called the hot Caribbean coast for a reason. It's always hot. <laughs> it's something you tend to forget about uh, when you're living in the U.S., particularly in Maine, just how, how uh, the heat takes a toll. But it's been so far, I've only been here, I'm approaching my third month and, and very rewarding. Uh, I, I'm going to try screen share. I haven't really had a shot at practicing with this. And so my uh, mentors in Washington, D.C. will tell me if I'm off on the wrong tangent, but first I wanted to show a website. Let me see if I can, I don't actually see that as an option anymore. I'm not sure what happened. Well, I'll show you some PowerPoint, which has, we'll see if that works. And uh, please chime in if it doesn't. I'm not seeing it here. I can see your um, PowerPoint. I think it's a bandwidth problem. I'm seeing little pieces of my presentation, but if it doesn't move along soon, I'll try going. Uh, is that better? Mm -hmm. So this is a, actually one of the things you do as a volunteer is you give presentations, um, trying to sell ideas or share ideas. And one of mine is how we can um, leverage, and here's some of the background material on Peace Corps we use in Spanish, um, about the history, about our region about our proposal. Um, 
and some of the activities, I apologize, it's all in Spanish, but that's the language here. But I'm in that red box, if you see it, of economic development programs, which includes entrepreneurship, income generation, edu education and finance, microfinance, a lot of things that people in development, economic development are familiar with uh, in the US and overseas. And I, I've arrived just in time to be a part of a, an economic development plan for the next four years with Pedro Sanchez, who you see on the screen is the new mayor of Aracataca. And uh, so we've got a program in place. We've got just three months to do a development plan, but it's very good timing for me because I get to lay the groundwork for the next four years of Peace Corps volunteer involvement here because following my uh, stay, I'll leave in October, there should be another volunteer here and then maybe as many as two more. So for six years, there may be volunteer support working our way down this Gantt chart of, of uh, activities. One of the first things you do as a volunteer in, in Colombia, at least, is you do what's called community mapping. And because I'm a planner, I took that a step further and I'm doing it all with geographic information systems. And uh, this is an example of a map of Aracataca showing different neighborhoods or barrios and some of the assets they have because most development has to be based on assets. So I'm doing something they hadn't done before and I'm hoping it's something we'll be able to share and, and develop over time. But I've come up with some basic ideas for development and how they fit with the Peace Corps plan, which you, is all Spanish again, I apologize. But if you're in marketing, you probably recognize the four Ps, which are price, placement, product, and promotion. But this is in Spanish and it's still Ps. But yeah. here's the region. Yeah? Um, no. I only see the first page of your... Oh, it's not changing? No, it hasn't been changing. So. Oh, my goodness. I'll quit. <laughs> Too bad. I thought it was, and it's oh, very slow. It's, but I now it's changed. I, I wish I'd known. I've, oh, now it's changed now it's, to uh, yeah. I'm in edit mode. Okay. It's just slow. Yeah. Well, let me. Are you seeing anything, or I'll give up on this? this I think it's a bandwidth. Problem. I'll give up if I can share. How do you do that? Am I back out now? No. Screen share is off. Now you see me. Yes. I apologize. I thought you were seeing slides and nobody told me. Anyway, the slides show some ideas for tourism here because we have a remarkable environment, culturally, historically, uh, natural and uh, environment, and even the local sort of uh, party scene. All of them are interesting and none of them are really being marketed effectively. So I'm finding my niche here in, in Colombia. Um, working with government agencies, private foundations, businesses. Uh, there's a, always a struggle between what, I guess, what the town wants, what the Peace Corps wants, and what I think I'm capable of doing, and that's sort of the art of it. But, but more importantly, you have to figure out, if you're a response volunteer, how you're going to set things up for people coming after you, because a lot of times you're there just to get things started. And um, it's good and well if I start a GIS system, but if the next volunteer doesn't understand or want to work with geographic information systems, then it, it may die on the vine. And so I'm reminded there's a lot of um, communication between volunteers where we test ideas, product ideas, or service ideas, things we could do to find out if it's going to work. Uh, because we come from very different backgrounds, the 10 of us who are trying to develop this program, and, and uh, it's a good way to check to make sure we're not going off on a tangent. We also get a lot of oversight from the Columbia Peace Corps staff. They uh, come to visit, they arrange housing, they arrange um, professional contacts, and we have in-service training or meetings during, the, during our time here. Now, in the three month or six months stay, I'm not sure how much of that there can be, but with 11 months there's more. I don't know if there's much more to say. I, I'm still starting out, I think, with three months. And so I wonder how someone with three months can hit the ground that fast. Uh, particularly, I mean, I know Spanish. I, I thought I knew it, <laughs> though it's different here. It's a faster version on the coast, but I can't imagine jumping in for three months with a language you don't know. That would be an extremely exciting challenge. Yeah. And you but, know, yeah. In, we have a variety of different positions, you know, at different yeah. length, for different reasons. Um, with the position that you're in, it, it's 
you know, your 11 month position, which is what they saw as the need for what you're, you guys are doing. Yeah, it takes time. Uh, and for instance, we're, I'm trying to launch an educational program now, but in, in uh, the schools are starting late, and then we have Carnival, or Mardi Gras, as you call it, New Orleans, and that will knock everything out for about two weeks. Another program was just canceled, and so in three months, you might, <laughs> you might still be trying to start things. Yeah. It, 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 it's a bumpy process, but um, if you keep enough balls in the air, one of them probably will, will be successful. Yeah. I don't know, in, in uh, the case of Ukraine, if you had that sort of variety. Yeah, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of variety in Ukraine, um, you know, and it just kind of depended on the project, uh, where it went. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think now what we'll do is we'll take some questions. of the questions. Um, thanks, yeah. Jim. We really sure. appreciate hearing from you and what you've been doing since you started. Um, I think what, one thing I would like to add is, you know, Jim went with a group of 10 and um, some of the positions, it's just you're the only response volunteer going out there at that time. Some of them, there might be a group of five going at the same time. Um, Jim's group, um, their mission is to start the community economic development sector in Colombia. And so that's one thing that Response does is start new sectors. We also re-enter into countries um, that had been evacuated or whatnot, or even start new countries that ha doesn't, hasn't had um, volunteers in the past. So um, they like to have Response volunteers get things going and started. Um, and then other positions are just specific to needs of certain partner organizations. And so you might be just serving as the only response volunteer, or there might be two, or you might have a group of five with all different positions, all different um, serving and doing different in different sectors. Um, so there's a variety of situations that you could be in as a volunteer. Um, so, and I don't know how many was in your group when you served. So there were three, but we had we were uh, three were in my actual doing what I was doing. But there were other there were university teachers, there were teacher trainers, and one thing with response too is you'll see is there sometimes not every position gets filled and will get pushed on to the next group, and so that happened with our group as well. Mm -hmm. So, so similar. Yeah, and I, effect. I I should add that I have not seen any of my ten fellow volunteers since the first two week training. We're spread out. I think the closest one to me is probably six hours away. <laughs> so uh, maybe it, there's some who are four. So it's, it, it it's all, but we've got enough cell coverage uh, and internet access that we're able to communicate. In Ukraine, you know, it was kind of the opposite. There was a lot of interaction, even with the two-year volunteers. And that might have been because I was in Kiev in the capital near the Peace Corps headquarters, but it just depends on the country. But you typically, if you want, you can really get a lot of interaction with other volunteers. Wait, ready to jump in these questions? Yeah, so um, I'll start, uh, I'll just read some of the questions. Just so you know, there's a 15 second delay. Um, so if you start typing in some questions, it might be a little delay before we answer them. Um, but go ahead and start asking some of your questions. You can um, address them to Jim or Dustin or any of us um, to answer. So I'll start with the first one. Um, the question is generally, how many applicants are there for an open position, do some positions uh, position types generate more applications than others? Um, yeah, they vary definitely. Uh, what I've noticed is the more general applications. Let's say if there's an there's a position for five people, there's five people in the health sector or teaching. Um, we usually get a lot more if there are. Um, more positions for that particular assignment. Um, we can get 50 to 80 uh, um, applications for ones. those general ones. Um, I've seen for popular ones, I mean, it's hard to say what's popular. It could be um, based on the country or just the uh, type of position. Like I had a very popular one of in Rwanda uh, that um was for uh, working with refugees and a lot of people applied for that so i had maybe 30 or 40 applications for that one position um so in some positions uh, are more technical and they're a little more difficult maybe like orthopedic 
or some something Hazmat more specific. Yeah. Um, we've had specific positions that are you know harder to get more of those those applications. So um, it's hard to say they vary. Sometimes we'll get like five to ten applications for a more specific position, or we'll get uh, you know fifty to eighty. Um, applications for those that are a little bit more general and um, are, aren't as specific, I guess I could mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers your question. Um, are project deliverables monitored and measured once placed? Um, so and there was another question a little bit about this, um, about how do we measure our deliverables as volunteers. It's the same with the 27-month pos um, position. All of our volunteers fill out a form. They fill out um, quarterly uh, reports and talking that include how many uh, people we've reached out to in what area. So we do a lot of tallying and reporting, qualitative and quantitative um, reporting to all to staff. So every single volunteer is reporting out about what their projects, what they're doing, um, talking about their projects, and um, even quantifying the number of people they're reaching um, in the field. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a big change from the Peace Corps in the 1970s. Um, we were sent off to the village and kind of forgotten, and that was actually tons of fun. <laughs> But now we do have a lot more reporting we have to do. There's a lot of paperwork that I didn't have before. And I think a lot of it is Colombian and it's trying to develop this program. But it is it is um, more controlled and more controllable partly because of technology. Back in the 70s, there were no cell phones. There was no internet. There was barely mail. Um, and so we were... We were out there, and that was lovely. Uh, but this is another kind of engagement that does feel a bit more professional. Okay. Um, okay. Um, there was a question. It says, can you please show the first Friday open office contact information? So I will do that. Uh, see if I can. There we go. Um, I will show here it is. First and third Fridays, 1 to 4 at Eastern Time, um, you can email pcresponse at peacecorps.gov or call 202-692-2250 um, to make an appointment. Um, so you would make an appointment during this time, first and third Fridays of every month. You could speak with the recruiter and talk to them directly about Peace Corps response. And we can leave that up if you want, Bina, and just answer some more questions, just in case somebody wants to write oh, it down. Sure. Oh, I think I logged out, actually. No, that's OK. <laughs> okay. Um, OK. Um, so let's go to another question. Um, can we get access to the PowerPoint? Um, so this webinar is being recorded. And so we will send out an email to everyone of how to access this webinar. You will put it up on our website as well and um, send an email to everyone in our list. If you got the email about this webinar, then you can, you'll get another one about the recording of it. So you can see it again. Um, you can also email us at the PC response uh, email address uh, if you wanted us to send you the PowerPoint um, as well. We could do that. Sure. I don't know if I can try the screen share briefly. I, I, I didn't have much last, uh, luck last time, but let's see what happens. It just there. Okay. Let me know if this comes up. I wanted to show I have a web page. Uh, I guess it isn't going to come up. I have a web page with my blog and information, uh, but. I see it is now. Is it there? I guess not. It's coming. But ah, oh, it's coming. Okay, slowly but surely. But if you want to read specifically about what I'm going through, you can go to uh, www.madfisher.info/columbia, and if you see the web page there, you'll see it in green on the screen. Otherwise, I can email it to uh, Bina, or she may have it. 
but I keep a record of personal stuff, but I'm also putting development, geology, uh, geography, and other issues, you know, things that I'm doing as part of my job. So you get a more intimate feel for what I'm up to. Okay. Thank you, Jim, for sharing that with everyone. Um, I do have a link to your blog. So if you are interested in that as well, you can um, ask. But did you want to say that again, how they can get on? Sure. Uh, well, it's, it's pretty easy. It's uh, madfisher.info at uh, uh, slash Columbia. And the Columbia has a capital C, and apparently that matters. So madfisher.info slash Columbia. Okay, great. So um, yeah. we have 10 more minutes, so I'm going to try to get through some of these other questions. What have I missed? Um, Will there be another short-term teacher training program in Rwanda? Um, what is the language requirement? Um, we, at the moment, we don't know about the short-term um, teacher training program. We haven't heard anything about that. Uh, that was a certain situation where that was the need. They needed a number of volunteers for three months, um, but at the moment, they don't have that need. Uh, so, again, we don't we don't always know what will happen next year we know what we will have that's open we know it's open um and so it's it it's hard to predict um but certain positions come every year certain positions we know we'll get every year um but they change um we work with different partners in, di in the countries and so they find different partners with different needs and so different positions come up all the time um, so it's hard to predict exactly what is going to happen so it, it is a matter of just checking back and getting the notifications um, to be sent to you when certain keywords pop up if you're interested in Rwanda or teacher training put in, put in best. those yeah, keywords and you can get notified of those positions when they pop up so Let's see. When are opportunities removed from the open list on the website? Many listed have dates leaving soon, and others have posted their anticipated departure dates. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> others have passed their, de their departure dates. So basically, if they're up, then we're still looking for people. We take them down usually once a volunteer leaves. So. Even if we have selected some, some, sometimes, I don't know about you, but for me, even though I've selected, sometimes I keep it up just in case um, that person doesn't make it through or isn't able to go. So I'll keep it up just to have someone um, who might be interested in as a backup or something. But once that person is serving, then I take it, we take it down at least then when we're not looking anymore. But if it's up, that means we are looking um, if it's soon, sometimes it means we haven't found someone yet and the date might be pushed back. So uh, we do put in all of our positions that the date's flexible, they might move, which happens because uh, the process takes time. I mean, it usually takes about three months, but it could take a little longer for some people to get through. And so sometimes we push it back. Sometimes we invite someone and something comes up they can't serve we invite another person something comes up they can't serve and so we keep trying to find someone and even though the date's coming sooner we're still looking in some situations um so even if the date says maybe in two weeks if it's still up on our website that means we're still looking <laughs> and I would encourage you anything less than two months because it takes about two months to legally medically clear if you're very interested in a position that's listed but it's a month it's a week or a month away go ahead and email and ask about it hey I know this is coming up what's going on I'm very interested I would suggest that you do that mm -hmm. thank you okay. yeah what are some of the main duties of the agriculture extension agent so I, you know, I would encourage you. That's a very specific question. Go ahead and email PC Response and give the full name because we have multiple ag extension uh, positions. So just email PC Response at PeaceCorps.gov, and then you'll get connected with the recruiter for that position. That's what I would tell you to do. I, I, would, I would add, add though, though uh, there's an echo this time. I'm. Uh, uh, that's going to be confusing. Uh, I. I have uh, worked with Ag Extension in Ecuador, and now I'm working in Colombia. And 
basically that one of the things Peace Corps needs to do in any country is they need to try to align the volunteers with some government agency as a rule. And so ag extension would mean you're probably working with a Ministry of Agriculture or Department of Agriculture or something like that. And uh, in Ecuador, and I think in other environments, there are very interesting levels of technology, and it's probably true outside of agriculture, that some people are generalists and they come in and they're working grassroots with farmers on very basic stuff. Others have degrees in agronomy and they're doing trials of, of certain kinds of vegetables or plants. You may have that experience in response too. You may have something very technical and specific or something very general or a mix. Great. Thanks, Jim. Um, great. So we have about five more minutes, so I'll try to get through some of these other questions. Um, there's one, I'll be departing for PCRV um, position ending of March. Who can I talk to regarding possible temporary suspension of my Medicare benefits? I would say you talk to your Medicare um, provider about that. We can um, help assist you with a, a form, a letter, or something um, that you might need to show proof. Uh, but it is up to them on on the suspension. Um, we don't really aren't very much involved in that except and, for providing. And I can speak to that. Proof. You need to be, you want to be really careful with that. If you're going to suspend, I understand that they take the money out of your social security. I worked in healthcare for a long time. You can suspend, but once you basically, you just drop that insurance. Once you drop it, you cannot get back in again until open enrollment the following year, which I believe is usually November or December to January of each year for the following year. So you need to be really careful with that. So you want to reach out to them, explain to them what's going on, and you might have to just keep that coverage in addition to having the Peace Corps coverage. So um, if you have more specific questions, contact your recruiter, but really that is that is a challenge when you have Medicare. It's tough to just drop it, and then you can't re-enroll whenever you want. You can only re-enroll during your open enrollment. Okay. And then how many countries are we involved in? We I explained 53. Um, so this question, are applicants who may not be the best fit for a position to which they have applied, uh, reviewed for perhaps a fit for another position, or is this the only done, or is this only done through the profile applicants complete? Um, yeah, it's a competitive process. So even if you don't quite get one position, definitely look at other positions and see what you're a great fit for. Um, one way to do it is look at, at look at our minimum qualifications in the position and see if you fit those minimum qualifications. Also keep in mind that we get several applications and there might be someone with just a little bit more experience. And so even if the other person was selected, it doesn't mean that you can't apply again and find another position that fits your background um, because for that position you might be the best qualified for the next one that you applied for so um, yeah I would I would just say that typically recruiters especially with lots of positions are not going to look you're if, if you're not a good fit here we're probably not going to find another fit for you but what you can do if you're not selected is you can always reach out to your recruiter and maybe get recommendations from them what type of position am I qualified for what should I look for so as Bina said you really want to take the onus on just like any job any, any professional job typically you're not going to have that done where we're looking for a fit for you occasionally it might happen but typically you want to be the one taking the onus on that and you can always ask us for our opinion or schedule office hours and we'd have to be happy to review your resume with you great um so do potential response volunteers need to return to uh, the U.S. during the application process? If so, so, for which part of the process is that required? It's not required. It's just a little easier to get through the process if you're in the States, and that's because you would have to mail us you know, your passport and applications to get a no-fee passport. Um, all of volunteers travel on no-fee passports, but it's possible to do it from abroad. It just takes longer. So make sure you have plenty of time when you're applying and going through the process from abroad. Know that, you know, if you do have to get a visa, it could take time to do that and get the visa, get the um, passport, you know, also medical, uh, going through the medical process, are you able to do all the medical tasks where you are? You might be able to, but you might not be able to. So it depends on how much access to the medical and also um, how much time you have to get your passport application to us um, from overseas because 
most of the time you would have to go to an U.S. embassy and fill out a you know form at DS-11, get that packet um, filled out and signed, and then they would send it to us. So it, it just takes a little more time, but it's possible. Um, Okay. Uh, okay, I feel like. Yeah. Okay, what is Peace Corps' experience with short term programs? Success, shortcomings? Um, well, uh, I, I'll say, I'll say that two years is really great. It gives you the luxury of settling in, learning a language, getting to know the culture well. Three months is pretty pressed. 11 months was kind of the breaking point for me. I didn't want to be much less than that. But some people can move into a situation and be extremely effective in weeks. Um, depends on what you're asked to do in your style. Uh, but I think three months works well if you have a professional commitment in the U.S. and you can fit it in between things. Um, Eleven months meant resigning my job and unemployment when I returned, but I decided it was worth it. Thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, I mean, measuring success, we hope to, we believe that all volunteer service is successful um, as long as, you know, you're reaching out and you're doing what you can to provide you know, assistance and the needs that are possible, whether it's th three months or 12 months, um, there's always some type of need you're being, um, that's being met. Uh, so now we are, it's time. So we want to thank you for joining us today for our first webinar of the year. And please keep checking our websites and check for other webinars, check to see if we're doing any info sessions in your area. Um, but thanks again for joining us. Uh, and we look forward to working with you and your application at P for Peace Corps response positions. Send any additional questions to pcresponse at peacecorps.gov and we'll answer them there. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. I think that's it.